Hey gang, just to let you know, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at FlipsideGaming.com and OriginalMagicArt.store. Using the code gets you 10% off orders $10 or more, and you get to help out the channel at the same time. Also, just so you know, all orders over $10 or more until January 28th, 2019 at 11.59pm will be entered to win their chance at a Ravnica Allegiance booster box. It's one entry per person, so good luck, and be sure to let me know what you open. Today's game has us back at Labis, and Skylar has rejoined us, playing as Ur-Dragon, and keeps Blood Chief Ascension, Wasatora Nekuru Kreen, Daragaz Reincarnated, Ramos the Dragon Engine, Mystic Monastery, Command Tower, and Crystal Quarry. I am playing Tristani, and I keep a Forest, Stirring Wildwood, Phyrexian Processor, Angel of Sanctions, Fortified Village, Secluded Step, and Windbrisk Heights. Tom is playing his Azor deck, keeping a Pact of Negation, a Chromatic Lantern, Manamo School at Water's Edge, Fencer Shaper Savant, Two Planes, and Elixir of Immortality. Lastly, Romain is playing his Neheb deck, and keeps a Mountain, Mortuary Mire, Necromantic Summons, Kragma Warcaller, Ragemonger, Stitch Together, and Liliana's Caress. Tom wins the die roll, and starts us off. Tom plays a Manamo as his land for turn, and casts Elixir of Immortality. Romain plays a tap Mortuary Mire and places nothing on top of his library. Skylar plays a Command Tower, and the table groans as he drops Blood Chief's Ascension on turn 1. I play a tap Stirring Wildwood, and I pass. Tom plays a Plains, and passes. Romain plays a Mountain, and he casts Liliana's Caress. This elicits another groan from the table, and he passes. Skylar plays a tap Mystic Monastery, passing. I play a Fortified Village, having it come in untapped as I reveal a force from my hand. Tom plays a Plains, and casts Chromatic Lantern. Romain plays a Swamp, and we see a Ragemonger in his main phase before passing to Skylar. Skylar plays a Forest, and he casts Farseek. While Skylar is searching, I cast Enlightened Tutor and go to search for my library as well. I grab a Soul Ring and put it on top. I play the Forest I revealed, and I cast Soul Ring. I then make a bold statement by casting Phyrexian Processor, and I put 25 life into it as it enters the battlefield. Tom plays a Kefnet's Monument in his main phase, and he passes. Romain plays a Kragma Warcaller in his main phase, needing to only pay 3 for it. Skylar also realizes that his Ascension should have a counter on it, and puts it on there. Moving to combat, Romain hits Skylar and I for 4 each, with 1 Minotaur apiece, and at the end of turn, this gives the Ascension another counter, and Romain passes. Skylar plays a Crystal Quarry as his land for turn, and out comes Wasatora. I play a Windbrisk Heights tapped, forgetting to hide away a card. I then drop an Angel of Sanctions, and exile temporarily the Blood Chief Ascension. I do so, hoping this will keep me around, as no one wants an active Ascension on the field except for Skylar. Tom plays another Plains as his land for turn, and he casts Azur in his main phase. He uses the Kefnet's Monument trigger to tap down my Angel, and I realize this is the darkest timeline. Romain pays 1 to cast Neheb in his main phase, with that Ragemonger doing some good work in reducing costs. He swings Neheb at me, and the Rangemonger and Kragma at Skylar. I take 4 from Neheb with First Strike, which has everyone discard a card as a result, and all of Romain's opponents take a further 2. Romain discards a big game Hunter to the trigger, and pays the Madness cost, which lets him cast it instead. It comes in, and blows up Azor, and while we then move to normal damage, Skylar also takes 8. Skylar pays 3 for Song of the Dryads to enchant the Liliana's Caress in his main phase, and he gets some revenge with Wasatara hitting Romain for 5. Romain also has to sacrifice a creature, which has the big game hunter finally go to the graveyard like it was supposed to. I draw for turn, and don't have a land to play, and pass. Tom follows my example, drawing, having the land to play, and passing. Romain reveals the card he's about to draw, and pays the miracle cost of Reforge the Soul. Tom responds by casting Venser's Shaper Savant to bounce a Liliana's Caress back to Romain's hand so he'll wheel it away. With the trigger on the stack, I activate my processor and make a 25-25 horror token. I then tap one white to cast Swords to Plowshares, and exile the horror and gain 25 life. Tom also uses the Monument trigger to tap and keep Neheb tap for a turn. We then discard our hand and draw 7 new cards. Moving to his main phase, 
Romain plays a mountain for his turn and moves to combat. He swings the Ragemonger and Kragma Warcaller at Tom, who blocks one of them with Venser and only takes four. Skylar draws for turn and plays Door to Nothingness in his main phase. Moving to combat, Wasatora finds herself swinging at Tom, and Tom takes five. Since he can't sacrifice a creature, this gives Skylar a 3-3 cat dragon token, which is the first time I've ever seen one on the battlefield. I play a command tower as my land for turn, and I cast Tristani in my main phase. I then drop a wall of omens, gaining four life and drawing a card. At the end of my turn, Tom cracks his elixir of immortality to gain five life and shuffle his graveyard into his library. Romay also wants to get in on this, using Rakdos Charm to blow up my Phyrexian processor. Tom plays a tap myriad landscape as his land for turn, and he casts Asperia Supreme Judge. This lets Tom tap and keep West Tour tap thanks to the Kef and its monument, and he passes turn. Romain plays another mountain, and we see a Raider's Wake in his main phase. Oh goodness, more painful discard cards. Moving to combat, Neheb and the Ragemonger go at Tom, while the Kragma Warcaller goes at Skylar. Both Tom and Skylar take the hits, with Tom taking 8 and Skylar taking 4. We all have to discard when Neheb connects, and we then take 2 from Raider's Wake. Romain moves to his end of turn, and the Wake's Raid triggers. Romain has Tom discard another card, and lose another 2 life. Skylar pays 3 in his main phase to cast Herald's Horn and names dragons. With nothing else, he passes. I draw for turn, and I play a Plains. I cast a Karmic Guide in my main phase, gaining 2 life as it enters, and I bring back Green Warden and Marasa, gaining 4 more as it enters. I also get to return a card to my hand as it enters, and the Phyrexian Processor finds its way back to my hand. Moving to combat, the Angel of Sanctions hits Romain for 3. Tom casts a Knight of the White Orchard in his main phase, and goes to find a Plains card, as I have more lands than he does. He grabs a tapped Hollowed Fountain, and puts it onto the field. Tom then plays a Maze of Ith for his land for turn, and he passes. Romain casts Diabolic Tutor in his main phase, grabbing his library and searching for a card. He then casts his own Elixir of Immortality, which is a very popular card in my videos recently. He moves to combat, and everything gets swung at me. I block, like so, and realize after the fact that I'd forgotten that Karmic Guide is pro-black, and Romain happily kills the Wall of Omens and Greed Warden Marasa. I choose not to exile the Greed Warden as it dies, and I then take 4 from the unblocked Minotaur. In his second main phase, Romain plays a top Forgotten Cave, and moving to his end step, has the Raider's Wake trigger target me. I discard a card, and lose 2 life. Skylar reveals the Sun Scorch Regent for his Herald's Horn trigger, drawing it and drawing for turn. He then casts the Regent in his main phase, and moving to combat, swings Wasatora at Tom. Tom draws from the Asperia trigger, and is happy with whatever the card is. So happy, in fact, that he untaps Wasatora with the Maze of Ith, and Skylar passes to me. I let Karmic Guy die on my upkeep to the Echo Cost, and I cast a Regal Force in my main phase, gaining 5 life as it enters, and drawing 2 cards. Skylar's region also gets a plus 1 plus 1 counter, and he gains 1 life. I then play a Bountiful Promenade as my land for turn, and move to combat. The Angel of Sanctions once more deals 3 to Rome, and I pass turn. At the end of my turn, Tom cracks his landscape to go and find two islands. Tom plays a Temple of the False God, and recasts Azor in his main phase. This gives the region another counter, and Skylar another life. Tom has a Monument Trigger tapped down the Regent, and proceeds to drop a Sword of the Animist, giving the Regent its third counter and Skylar another life. Tom then gears up Asperia with the Sword, and swings Asperia at Skylar. He gets the Search Trigger from the Sword as he swings, and grabs an Island. Skylar blocks with Wasatora, and Asperia and the Cat Dragon die. Romain plays a Mountain, and casts Neheb for only three, since the Ragemonger still reduces his cost. This gives Skylar's region another counter, and Skylar another life. Moving to combat, Romain uses the old finger guns to illustrate where his lovely Minotaur army is headed. I once again block Neheb, but still take 8 from the other two. Moving to his end step, the wake trigger happens, and I once again discard a card, and lose 2 life. Skylar plays a mountain as a land for turn as well, and he casts a Scale Lord Reckoner in his main phase. He then casts a Fists of Suns, aka the Infinity Gauntlet, and he passes turn. I cast a Helm of the Host in my main phase, and pay to equip it onto my Regal Force. Skylar's Regent gives him a life and a counter, of course, and moving to combat, I make a token copy of the Force, drawing three cards this time, and gaining another five life. I then swing back at Rome for ten damage, and I pass to Tom. Tom plays a Reliquary Tower as his land for turn, and casts Thran Dynamo. This gives Skylar another life, and his region another counter. Tom then moves to combat, and swings Azor at Skylar. 
This triggers Azra's ability, and Tom pays mana into it, enough so that X is 3. Skylar blocks with his Kitty Dragon token, and Tom then passes. At the end of turn, Romain cracks his elixir, gaining 5 life and shuffling his graveyard into his library. Romain plays a Bloodfell Caves as a land for turn, which comes in tapped and gives him 1 life. He recasts Neheb once more, gaining the region another counter and Skylar another life. Romain swings all the Minotaurs at Skylar this time, and Skylar blocks with his Reckoner on the Neheb. He takes 8, and in his second main phase, Romain suspends Wheel of Fate. At the end of turn, Romain has me discard a card with the Raider's Wake trigger, and I lose 2 life. Skylar uses his Fist of Suns to pay for one of each color of mana, rather than spend the seven to cast a Shouldred. This gets countered though by Tom with a Cryptic Command, and he also draws a card. The Regent also gains another counter, and Skylar gains another life, and Skylar then passes to me. I draw for turn, and I move to combat. I gain a second token copy of the Regal Force, this time drawing four cards and gaining five life. I move to combat, and I swing the Three Forces and the Angel of Sanctions at Tom. Tom in turn untaps one with his Maze of Ith, and blocks one with the Knight of the White Orchard, and only takes eight in the end. I then play a Force as my land for turn, and I cast a Green Sun Zenith where X is six, and Skylar's Regent gains another counter and gives him another life. The Zenith then resolves, and I go and grab Ulvenwald Hydra. I mislayer my triggers unfortunately though, gaining the nine life from the Hydra from Tristani first, and then going to find a Reliquary Tower. With nothing else, I pass to Tom. Tom plays a tap to Mary of the Skyru in his land for turn, and he moves to cast a Cage Sun in his main phase. He names Blue as it enters, and he then casts a Consecrated Sphinx to the groaning of the table. <laughs> Tom then equips Azor with the Sword of the Animist, and he swings the Sphinx at Romain. He grabs a basic first, and then pays 6 into Azor's ability to draw 6 and gain 6 life. Romain draws, and Tom draws too. Romain also removes his suspend counter from his wheel, although at this point I don't think any of us really want it to resolve with Tom's consecrated sphinx out. Romain then taps out in his main phase to cast a Rakdos return where X is 6, and he targets Tom. Tom counters it with a force of will, exiling a card and losing 1 life. Moving to combat, Romain swings all of his minotaurs at Tom, who are now all 6 powered because he only has 1 card in hand. Tom blocks in the head with his Consecrated Sphinx, which is now a 5-7, and Tom then takes the rest, dropping to 10. At the end of Romain's turn, he targets Tom with a Wake trigger, and Tom discards Brigo, losing 2 life. Skylar draws for turn, and Tom chooses not to draw. We then see a Reign of Thorns in Skylar's main phase, and he blows up my Helm of the Host, Romain's Raider's Wake, and Tom's Reliquary Tower. Moving to combat, Skylar swings the big ol' Sunscorch Regent my way, which I stop with my Ulvenwald Hydra. Skylar then passes, and at the end of turn, I activate Tristani to populate another token copy of the Regal Force. I gain 5 life as it enters, and I draw 5 cards. Tom decides to draw along with me, and draws 10 from his Consecrated Sphinx triggers. I play a Rogue's Passage as my land for turn, and I cast Traverse the Ulvenwald in my main phase, having met the Delirium requirements. I grab a Regal Behemoth, and I put it to my hand. Moving to combat, I swing three tokens at Tom, the original Regal Force at Romain, and the Angel of Sanctions at Skylar. Sadly because I'm so bad at math, Tom blocks one of the tokens with his Sphinx, untaps another one with his Maze, and lives to fight another day by taking the last hit and dropping to three. Romain also takes five, and Skylar takes three. In my second main phase, I make another token copy of my Force, gaining five life and drawing six cards. Tom is fine with this, drawing another twelve. I then drop the Regal Behemoth, which really isn't my first choice, gaining 5 life as it enters and becoming the Monarch. I then pass to Tom, drawing a card at the end of my turn, and Tom draws 2. On Tom's upkeep, he casts Enlightened Tutor, which is never a great sign. He puts Righteous Authority on top of his library, and draws it for turn. Tom then plays a Prairie Stream as his land for turn, and he casts a Thought Vessel to help replace his Reliquary Tower. We then see the Righteous Authority drop onto Azor, and things are not looking good for our heroes. Azor is now enormous, and Skylar gains another counter on his dragon and one life. Tom moves to combat, and hits me for enough commander damage to take me out of this game and probably the next. Tom also becomes the monarch, and in his second main phase, he casts Elish Norn, followed by Propaganda. Tom then casts Thalia Heretic Cathar, and at the end of turn, Skylar's Ascension gains a counter. 
Romain transmutes Shred Memory to go and find a card that will hopefully deal with Tom. He grabs a key to the city, which he casts. Romain then activates it, discarding Asylum Visitor to the key, and pays the madness cost to give his Kragma Warcaller unblockable and cast the creature at the same time. He swings the Warcaller at Tom, who untaps it with his Maze of Ith. Romain then passes to Skylar. Skylar attempts to resolve a Deathbringer Regent in his main phase, but Tom counters it with a Pact of Negation. Realizing they're probably dead either way, Skylar decides to at least do something, and he swings to take Romain out. Once Romain is dead, he concedes to Tom knowing he'll die on the swingback. Game review time. So, once again, being too quick on my decisions has cost me a game. Had I done a better threat assessment of what Tom had on his field, I would have swung an extra creature at him, probably the Angel of Sanctions, to take him out. By not doing so, it forced me to have to start digging into my library further and further, and with his Consecrated Sphinx out, it gave Tom all the answers he needed. I really enjoyed Tom's Azur deck, even though the fact that it denied instants and sorceries didn't really come into play. Having an ability that can draw him some cards is fantastic, and it was pretty funny to lose to a card like Righteous Authority, which I've only ever seen in a limited format. Skylar's Ur-Dragon deck functioned a lot better than his Scave deck did this game, but unfortunately by the time that he started dropping more and more threats, Tom had a grip full of counterspells, and Skylar wasn't really able to do very much. I realize now that technically Romain should not have been able to swing at Tom that last turn because of propaganda, and he didn't have the mana to pay for the attacking creature. He certainly played the aggressor for most of the game, but as soon as I started getting Tristani going, and also when Tom resolved his Elish Norn, his deck kind of fell a bit behind. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.